Hello Sagittarius and welcome to your in-depth monthly horoscope for March 2023 for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you some standout details to begin with. It's an action-packed month of course, but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail all the key influences particularly relevant to your sign. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me once more. If you're new to my channel, it's great to have you with me. Please comment. I interact with, with all comments. This is very much a community. But also please like and subscribe. Jupiter, your ruler, is in your sister fire sign of Aries throughout this month. But it is going to be incredibly influential in the first week but also in the last week. So I can't wait to share that with you. Also, there is going to be the spring equinox, which occurs on the 20th. And that's going to also bring an extra uh, sense of vitality and thrust to the part of your situation that's to do with your creativity, your warmth, your sociability. And with Mercury moving into Aries on the 19th, Quite a lot of very positive energy builds up for you as this month goes on. But it is a month when Saturn is going to be relocating. And of course there is a full moon on the same day on the 7th. And also Mars comes out of its shadow but is going to be tangling with Neptune again. Just as it did in October, November and the first week of December. So please stay with me. But if you would like to understand how your personal astrology is impacting on every day of your life, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data, of time, date and place of birth, I can produce your life roadmap report, which will help you to get a much more intimate understanding of those patterns. Sometimes the challenging ones that keep coming up, but also helping you to seize opportunities more firmly. In my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12-month forecast. Again, totally unique and personal to you. Please see the link beneath this video for more on that. So Sagittarius, as you enter into March, the Sun and Neptune are occupying the sign of Pisces. They're joined on the 2nd by Mercury and Saturn on the 7th. That's going to give you a big focus on this area. Now the fourth house in a more practical way is very much to do with where we live, so physical security. But it can also be where we rest and reflect. Family life, our inner world in terms of our emotions, but also our senses of where we feel comfortable. So our personal environment, all of these areas take on much greater importance, particularly with the arrival of Saturn, because Saturn's going to be here for the next two and a quarter years initially, and then a third a quarter year on top of that. So what does this all mean? Well, I feel as you go into this new month, this more tender and emotional dimension may not actually be incredibly obvious apart from the fact that you could have a really important conversation with a neighbour or a sibling over the first couple of days as uh, Mercury aligns with Saturn before arriving in Pisces. In a technical sense, Mercury's not that happy in Pisces, but for you, this is an opportunity to think Mercury very much more about those home issues. But your ruler Jupiter aligns with Venus on the second in an exact conjunction and they're together for the first week of this month within three degrees and that's a very buoyant warm and affectionate and even potentially very fortunate combination also Venus goes on to forge a terrific link with Mars in your sector of relating in week two so a lot of bubbly uh, energy there, the fire energy and the air energy of Mars, very invigorating. But I feel that what's 
developing for you is a need to be much more mindful of what is the base of your existence. And Neptune has been working its way into your situation since 2012. It's a very mystical energy. It can be confusing at times, but also there may have been times when you've really appre appreciated peace, nature, the countryside, being near water, or just moments of complete seclusion. But the full moon on the 7th in the sign of Virgo is very much to do with your emotions being close to the surface and it could be difficult to disguise them. Now, on the other end of the spectrum is the Sun, but interfacing with these two points is Uranus. Now, Uranus has brought a restless dimension to your sector of everyday structures, work, organisation, and so forth. But what I feel could happen with this full moon and in the following two weeks is that if your work-life balance is a little bit out of kilter. Saturn's arrival also on the 7th is asking you to take those structural needs much more seriously. Now in a really glorious way it could be that you're going to move, restructure a property, improve, renovate, or it could mean a new addition to your family, some changes to the family unit over the next few years which can be very exciting because Saturn asks us to work very hard at any gains we have. So just be mindful that this more tender energy is coexisting at the start of this month with some quite glamorous uh, vibrations. But on the 15th, Mars leaves its post-retrograde shadow. The retrograde ended on the 12th of January, so it's taken some time to really unravel. Mars retrograde happens every two and a half years. So as it emerges from this, it does tangle with Neptune again over the next two weeks. So some confusion could exist around an emotional matter linked to a relationship. Just be mindful of that. However, on the 16th, uh, Venus moves from uh, uh, Aries. Technically, uh, obviously, it's in its detriment, but moves into its home zone of Taurus. So here, Venus has given you an appreciation of improving the practical relationships in your life. If you're in a romantic relationship, Venus here is asking you to work a bit harder at just doing those thoughtful things and gestures that make the relationship that much sweeter. But it does forge a very practically positive link with Saturn from the 17th through to the 20th. And maybe there's going to be something that you change, perhaps within your home during that time or about a property that will give you a lot of satisfaction. But unfortunately, Venus also starts to get challenged by Pluto from the 14th through to the 19th. Now, this goes across four uh, sets of zodiac signs. In Venus's case, obviously, Aries, Taurus. In Pluto, Capricorn, Aquarius. What does it mean? Well, Pluto has been influencing your sense of self-worth and your financial situation for a long time. So in its square with Venus, it's kind of saying to you initially in Aries, don't be too easygoing with your resources, particularly if you're trying to impress somebody in a romantic dimension. Of course, they then both move in the case of Pluto on the 23rd into your sector of everyday communication. But Pluto's only going to be here for 11 weeks in Aquarius this year. Its influence will be felt much more keenly in year 2024. But on the 19th, Mercury moves into your sister fire sign of Aries, its third home of the month. And that brings a much more sparkling outgoing uh, energy to bear and then on the 20th we have the spring equinox this is the beginning of the western tropical calendar uh, it's very much the first uh, cardinal quadrant and the next 13 weeks for you are going to be really positive it gives you the chance to engage with people in a very bubbly outgoing way a way that you're very skilled at anyway but on the 21st, the new moon does tangle with the late position of Mars in the sign of Gemini. Now, Mars is going to be moving on the 25th into your 8th house, where it will be for six weeks. 
That's very much to do with intimacy, deep changes, shared financial resources. But on the 23rd, Pluto, as mentioned before, arrives in Aquarius. But that forges a quincunx to Mars. So when it comes to your ideas and how they relate to others, there could be a mismatch between something that you feel strongly about and how someone else feels too. But then, as we get to the last week of this month, an absolutely fantastic link between Mercury as it advances in Aries and Jupiter. So at the start of the month, it's Venus and Jupiter, the two planets of fortune in your fifth house, which is very outgoing, uh, a very vibrant and warm location. And then we have Mercury and Jupiter repeating the conjunction. So I think the start of this month and the end of this month can bring some real pleasurable experiences. Perhaps you're going to get out and mix and mingle, socialize, uh, do something that's fun. Uh, if you have children, it could be that their pursuits and activities and talents will give you a lot of satisfaction too. But as the month draws to a close, I feel that you do need to showcase your talents but one of the things that venus uh, in the sixth house is going to ask you to do is make sure that your communications at a personal level are meaningful and what saturn's going to do in your fourth house is ask you to think very carefully about what things mean to you in in the sense of those feelings so I would say that if you're going to be spending time with people socially, it needs to be people that you feel very close to or very comfortable with, or there is quite a profound connection to. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like, comment or subscribe.